Would you also recommend that while people are working, they wear pants? Taryn? <laughs> Look, I I definitely I definitely do recommend pants. <laughs> I, mean, I have pants on right now. I would, I just want you to know. I have pants on. Yeah, me uh, too. Me too. Um it's it's revolutionary really, but it that it does help, I will say, because I mean, yes, it's fun to to you know walk around your house with no pants on and to do work with no pants on, but the, again, there is just that <laughs> mindset shift. That puts you into a completely different space yes. when you are prepared. Like, you know, if somewhere, someone were to come to your door to deliver you mail, are you prepared to receive that person? That's pretty much the state that you should be in when you are working. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Welcome to Inspiration Rising. I'm David Trotter, a business growth consultant passionate about helping women and men double your business online, all without the paralyzing overwhelm, feeling all alone, or wondering what the heck to do next. I'm a serial entrepreneur and former pastor who's passionate about personal growth because that's what's helped me cultivate peace in my life and empowered me and transformed me to love my amazing wife, Laura, of 26 years and our two almost grown kids. So if you're all about business, personal growth, and peace in your life, you're in the right place. I'm super glad that you're here. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Inspiration Rising. It is great to have you here. Question for you, because of the pandemic, are you or a family member working from home for the first time ever? Now, if that's the case for you or your family, my guess is that you're finding out that there are some tremendous upsides, benefits from working from home, but there are also some downsides. Now, for me, over the past 12 years, I've been working from home, and I pretty much have had the house to myself all day long until my family starts rolling in in late afternoon. Now, I have to admit, I got to tell you, I mean, I love working alone in the quiet. Some people like action and co-working spaces and music and all of that. Not me. I love to be alone, do my thing, and be in quiet and just get stuff done. But then during the summertime, things would dramatically shift because my wife, who's a teacher, she would be home for the summer. My kids would be out of school, so they're home from the summer. I mean, it was just all of a sudden became chaos. Well, what do you think happened when the pandemic struck? All of a sudden, my whole family is home, right? They're doing their thing, which is great. But thankfully, in the home that we're living now, I have my own office that's kind of separate from the main living space and all is well. It allows me to stay super focused and be in a great space. And yet there are so many mental, emotional, and physical challenges that can come with working from home if you're not used to it. So today, I'm excited to introduce you to Taryn Calmer. She is going to share five ways to be more mindful as we work from home. And I believe you will benefit from each one of these uh, principles that she is here to teach us. Taryn is known as the chocolate pretzel. Brilliant URL, by the way. It's thechocolatepretzel.com because a pretzel company had already taken chocolatepretzel.com. What the heck? She spent over 10 years bringing yoga and meditation to people around the world. She's the chief wellness officer of Remote Team Wellness, a virtual wellness solution designed to bring health and balance to companies and their employees. And you're going to learn more about what her company can offer you in your business later in the interview. Now, before we jump into the conversation, I want to read a recent five-star review on Apple Podcasts from Kate Croco. She's the author of Thinking Like a Boss. And she writes, love what David is doing for women. The podcast is so inspirational, and I really enjoy hearing all of the guests he chooses. Thank you, Kate. That is awesome. I appreciate that. Now, if you, as a listener, are enjoying the show, there are two simple ways that you can help. One, you can leave a review and a rating on the Apple Podcast app. Number two, share the show with a friend who you know would benefit from this particular episode or another episode that you have uh, listened to. You can teach them how to open up their podcast app, how to subscribe, search for Inspiration Rising, click subscribe, tell them how to listen. 
I know some people aren't even into podcasts quite yet. You could be the breakthrough person to help your friend start listening to inspirational podcasts that will help them in their life, in their, their love, and in their business, right? Yeah, you could do that. All right. Hey, I'm excited for you to listen to Taryn. She's amazing. Let's jump into my conversation with Taryn Calmare. Well, Taryn, thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, David. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. So we are in the midst of COVID, no matter when you're listening to this podcast. Um, And there's lots of changes. Obviously, we're working from home. I don't know what the percentage is. Oh my gosh, it's got to be like, what, 90% other than... 96, yeah. 96, you've got the percentage. I, I, I saw I saw a percentage. I'm not entirely sure if it's correct, but I saw a 96 percentage um, the other day. Wow, wow. Okay, mm-hmm. and a lot of people are out of work, obviously. And then, of course, essential workers are there on the job. You know, they're not working from home. But there are unique challenges that we're facing um, that possibly could negatively impact our minds and our bodies now that we're kind of working from home in a different space. I've worked from home for 12 years now. So Mm -hmm. that wasn't a big change for me other than my wife, who's a teacher, and my two kids who are seniors, one in senior in high school, one senior in college. They're now home, Taryn. What the heck? (laughs) Yeah, it's crazy. (laughs) That's what's causing me stress. (laughs) I definitely get that. What are what are some of the unique challenges that we're facing from your from your vantage point? As we're starting this new paradigm and starting to settle into this new way of life, it's really interesting to just see how many things we did in our previous um, way of operating in our previous uh, roles that involved movement and involved, you know, getting from one place to another, getting ourselves out of our houses into Uh, an office building. But now with us just being in our space and working from our home environment, there is that almost elimination of a commute. So there's that that little bit of um, difficulty when it comes to being able to move your body. If you're if you're not a person who thinks about moving yourself around and um, having an active lifestyle, doesn't you don't have an active exercise routine, then it's quite challenging to then all of a sudden have your workload and your and the stress of this whole situation on you as well as then having to undertake a new exercise practice having to undertake a whole new way of life uh, to make sure that you're getting what your body needs to keep you active and to keep you well mm-hmm. so that's definitely also gyms a lot of most gyms have been closed for quite some yeah. time my gym opened for like a couple of weeks and then it's closed mm-hmm. now again here in california yeah, definitely. So, and that, and that's that's also quite a challenge for people to find ways to work out at home, to find ways to be in to engage with their space, especially if they're in a smaller space or in an apartment building. Then it can be quite difficult to you know get yourself moving in a, a limited amount of space. So, just really finding ways to get yourself up, get yourself moving around at least once an hour. If you're working from home, if you're in a stationary location, if you're not a person who optimizes with a standing desk, then I would definitely recommend um, making making ways and spaces in your day to find pockets of movement. Mm -hmm. Um, As you were saying, but as you also asked, um, there is definitely an effect on the mind as well. And that comes with, you know, just the fact that you are now in your home environment, in your home space. You don't have that same support network of your coworkers around. You're not out in the in, in uh, an office and social environment anymore. You can't just pop down to someone else's office and ask a question. So there's this whole other um, element of really needing to reach out to connect with people um, that can be quite difficult or anxiety producing for quite a few people. So there's there are quite a few layers on top of what has happened with the situation that really do need to be taken into consideration so that we can make this a sustainable long-term change. Because I mean, from this, this is not just going to be the span of COVID, I think a lot of businesses are realizing that it is far more effective, far more productive for people to be working from their home environments because they're they're getting just as much done and it's not, it's not taking, you know, paying a whole, paying for a whole office building to be able to actually facilitate 
what businesses need to get done. So right. I think this is a very long-term change for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you talked about the commute and the lack of the commute. I've actually had mm-hmm. some friends that just say, man, it just feels like there's no disconnect between I'm mm-hmm. going from you know, my kitchen with my, you know, husband or kid into my office. And now Mm -hmm. like my mom, the the ability for the mind to shift that quickly can feel overwhelming. And I told him, I said, Hey, you should just go to your car and drive for 15 minutes and then come back to your house. That's a fantastic recommendation. Even just going and taking a walk before you start work, going and doing something that separates you from family home life space yeah. to work space to allow yourself that shift, that energetic um, state shift as well. Yeah. 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 That is so hard. So, um, so one recommendation that you would have is to somehow walk or, or I could even see like a meditation or driving mm-hmm. anything. And mm-hmm. I find that, you know, I need to, uh, I I work out in the morning, then I'll shower, and then I get dressed. And even just the process of getting dressed with a, you know, a collared shirt versus a t-shirt, putting on shoes versus just sitting there barefoot (laughs) or with socks, for me, it changes my mindset. Absolutely. Yeah, because it prepares you to be going somewhere to actually be engaging with the day. I think there is that tendency for us to you know, slip into the pattern of maybe wanting to work on the couch or wanting to work in, in bed or wanting to not not wanting to shower or get ourselves ready. And those are the ways that this really starts to deteriorate how much space we're making between our home environment and our work environment. And really, that that is the, the most important thing, the most important differentiation factor, just mm-hmm. because it, 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 it does need to be separate. Mm-hmm. There does need to be that clear boundary of now I'm at home and now I'm at work. Otherwise, if the two get too intermingled, then it becomes this really challenging thing. It's, it's just too enmeshed. Mm-hmm. Um, and it becomes really difficult for you to, to find what your rest, find the mm-hmm. places where you can actually have downtime and decompression with your yes. family rather than you're in office or work mode. Mm-hmm. So. Would you also recommend that while people are working, they wear pants, Taryn? <laughs> Look, I, I definitely, I definitely do recommend pants. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I have pants on right now. I, would, I just want you to know, I have pants on. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, it's it's revolutionary, really, but it it does help. I will say because I mean. Yes, it's fun to, to you know, walk around your house with no pants on and to do work with no pants on. But the, again, there is just that <laughs> mindset shift that puts you into a completely different space yes. when you are prepared. Like, you know, if somewhere, someone were to come to your door to deliver you mail, are you prepared to receive that person? That's pretty much the state that you should be in when you are working. <laughs> 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 I love it. That is so good. I had a friend show up. He's running for city council and he wanted to, uh, he asked me ahead of time, like a couple days ago, Hey, uh, can I get your signature for, you know, to get on the ballot or, you know, whatever. I was like, sure. Yeah. And he just showed up like unannounced and my dog goes crazy. And my daughter comes in. She's like, Hey, um, this guy, I was on a, I was on a video, uh, like a conference call. Thankfully I wasn't the one speaking and I could just walk out I had, I was dressed. I was good. I was barefoot, but you know, I mean, who cares? You know, no big deal, but awkward. People could show up anytime asking for your signature to run for city council. They could. Yes. Okay. So why is it, um, particularly, I want us to speak to business owners, no matter how big the business and, um, people that are in influential places or roles in companies, why should they be concerned about health and wellness for their employees in addition to performance? Obviously, you know, that's a top-notch question. Are they getting their job done? Are they meeting deadlines? Right. Are they in a situation where they can be uh, undistracted, you know, and focused? But why should they also be focused on health and wellness from your perspective? Well, health and wellness is obviously the, one of the building blocks of our, of our well-being as humans. Um, and so humans, if you would 
if you want to see them as the foundation of your business, if there are humans working for your business, they are the cornerstone of your business. So for that to be something that you support and something that you prioritize, allowing the people that are in your company to be taken care of um, in a in a healthy manner is so important because if it, healthy people, healthy employees will stay longer and happy employees will work harder and be more productive. And it's just as simple as that. Like if you are actually taking time to check in with your employees, prioritize where they're at, prioritize their health and well-being, it gives the sense of you caring for the people that actually work for you, mm-hmm. for, of you actually undertaking um, undertaking some kind of responsibility for those people, not to just have to, you know, go out to the and be left to their own devices, especially in a situation that is so tough like this. Um, it's really, it's really supportive and shows that the, um, the, the employer cares. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely say that that is something to consider first, first off, if, if, um, a a business is thinking about why health and wellness is something that they should offer for their employees. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, you can't do the same things that we, that in previously we would, we would be able to take our coworkers out for drinks or to meet in social and socialize and outside of working situations. But now there's just this complete disconnect, not being able to meet up with your team anymore, not being able to have those moments outside of the working environment. And that can make people feel quite isolated Mm -hmm. remote work and uh, working from home can be quite an isolated and lonely place, especially if you're not used to it. So being able to really see where those gaps might be, um, as, especially as we move through this new transition, is a very important thing for any decision maker. Mm-hmm. I heard two things that I, I felt like you kind of intermingled there, and I want to tease them out just a little mm-hmm. bit. One is a very utilitarian um, thought process to go, the basis of your work in you know, like your company is people. And if you don't take care right. of them, they're going to leave or they're going to not be as productive. Like that's a very yeah. utilitarian approach. Um, and I think that's wise to think in that way. Also, mm-hmm. there's an opportunity to actually have genuine human care for, you know, other <laughs> human beings. You know what I mean? Imagine like, that. One is just utilitarian. Like they work for me. <laughs> I need to get the most out of them. You better take care of them. The right. other is... No, these are these are human <laughs> beings that have stories and lives and families. And I'm mm-hmm. not just concerned about their productivity, but I'm concerned about their well-being in the totality of their life. And Absolutely. I think, you know, people appreciate the first. Yes, I'm going to take care of you because, but you can feel the difference if it comes mm-hmm. with a level of care and concern. Uh, that, you know, that you've articulated. So uh, that's beautiful. Um, I was reading an article that you wrote some time ago where you outlined five ways where we can be more mindful, taking responsibility Mm. for our own, right? Our own Mm -hmm. health and wellness, because we can't wait for our companies or our business owner to do that. We'd like them to do that. And we encourage business owners to do that. But we need to take responsibility for our own health and wellness. And you outlined five ways to be more mindful in our mm-hmm. day-to-day work. And I just want to walk through those real briefly, if you don't mind. And I'll, yeah. I'll link to the article in our show notes, cool. of course, as well. But walk us through those. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the ways is by observing your autopilot. And I've, I've, basically, I've basically divided these into just things to make you a little bit more mindful of and mindful and aware in your days as you progress through them. Because everything starts and ends with intention. So basically the first the first the first way to be more mindful is to observe your autopilot. Observe the places in your life, the areas in your life where you're just going into unconscious brain function. Um, you're just moving through your days with the th- the the automatic responses of your brain, your the the learned responses of your brain and reacting in some ways to different situations. So to be able to start to become more mindful in your days, become more mindful in the decision-making process, it's really about 
learning to just take a step back and be the witness to yourself, being the witness to your own processes and starting to just take stock of where the things that you are doing are not by choice, but rather by learning, by conditioning and just and and just just doing them for the sake of Give me some examples. This is what you've always done. Give me some examples of how that might be either helpful or detrimental. Like I would go, oh, I'm doing this on autopilot. And you might say, oh, witness that because that might not be helpful for you. Like, give me some examples of that. Got you. Um, so something that you might be doing that's detrimental to your growth might be just speaking a certain way about yourself, saying, having a story that you are a certain type of person. You know, you, there are people who say, I'm just the kind of person that, and you don't realize how, how powerful those words are because you're saying that you are a person that cannot change outside of that definition that you've placed for yourself, outside of that very limited um, the realm of whatever it is you've boxed yourself into, sure. right? So that that can be a, a really detrimental effect you're of just thinking of just, that automatically. You're on autopilot mm-hmm. as you speak, as you think it, and as you say it. Okay. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and some look something that can be that can be good to have as an autopilot is breathing. <laughs> you know, it's fantastic that our bodies continue to do this thing that keeps us alive and keeps us supported. Um, but there are also responses that we we don't necessarily stay aware of. And so to become more aware of our autopilot means becoming more aware of the things that we are doing automatically. So thinking about how are, how am I breathing now? I'm really glad that my body takes care of breathing for me at all times, but taking a step back and taking a step further and looking at what is the quality and rhythm of my breath? And can I maybe start to control the way that I'm breathing to be able to calm my body rather than feeding into this high level, high stress circuit of um, very shallow breath. Right. 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 So yeah, hope that makes, makes a little bit more sense. Sure. Sure. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. My daughter Um, complains that um, her brother breathes too loud. (laughs) You breathe through his mouth? (laughs) No, it's through his nose. It's like kind of, you know, and he gets, you know, kind of a little, what, any, any recommendations on that? Any? I highly recommend that he takes a few deep breaths into his belly, but through his nose. So instead of breathing shallowly, because that will uh-huh. make a, a louder sound. Oh, yeah. If you if you breathe deep and you allow the breath to move not only from your chest all the way down to your belly, yeah. It already makes the breath a little bit more measured and, and quieter. Oh my gosh, you might have just saved a sibling <laughs> relationship right now. This is amazing. Thank goodness. Wow. Thank goodness. Give me uh, another way to be mindful. First of all, we want to observe our autopilot. Observe the autopilot. The second way to be more mindful is to be aware of your posture, to be aware of the position that your body is in, in space. I see so many people just almost falling through space as they walk or, you know, um, kind of leaning up against things or hunching themselves over on things and not really taking time to be conscious of the effect that that posture is having on the rest of the rest of their body or the rest of their day so you know they'll they'll sit slumped over a desk or over a phone and then wonder why they have shoulder pain or why they have a knee injury um so just being very aware of how you're positioning your body at all times is so so critical to not only understanding where you're where how to listen to your body and where your body is at but also just keeping yourself in a good space physically instead of allowing yourself to you know be in this position where your all your eyes are always downcast your head is always tilting forward your body is basically moving back toward the ground at all times mm. allowing yourself to elevate and lift and use the muscles that again, have been so generously placed around your body to engage and hold you in a strong and stable posture. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. 
Keep going. So um, then I'd say the next one would be to consciously and arrive and leave spaces. So basically, it is it is a weird one, but we almost we touched on it a little bit before when we were talking about the fact that it's really difficult to differentiate, you know, being in your kitchen ah. and you know with your you know with your family, and then you have all of a sudden have to go to work. You all of a sudden have to go to a new space and bring yourself into a completely new mindset, completely new um, way of looking at things. Things. And that's that's that means that you have to end off one interaction, end off one uh, one type of situation, and then move to the next with, with consciousness. So, how do I saying, do that? So, so not only just saying hello and goodbye, but when you are leaving a situation, wrapping yourself up, like so, saying like. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I'll see you later. And then you you leave. Do you can do whatever you want. If you're a person of ritual, then do whatever you feel like you need to do to cut yourself off from that space. But when you leave a space, you leave it there. You don't take it with you. You don't carry it into your next interaction. You don't carry it into your next meeting. You leave that space and the that the people that were there and all of the things that were there in that area. Mm. When you move into a new space. Sometimes I like to just sit myself down, take a nice deep breath, a full deep breath, and say, I am here, because it just grounds me into the mm. present moment. It grounds me into what I need to do next, not what I was doing before, I'm not thinking about what I need to do later on. I'm fully present with whatever I am doing in this moment. So, wow, wow. And how is that beneficial? How, why should I do this? So it's beneficial because it will help you to live more presently, live in the now rather than dwelling in on the past or living in the future or feeling yourself really pulled by the past or the future. Mm -hmm. And that can be that can be anything, you know, in regret or in to do's or whatever it may be that that's taking your mind away from the present. Mm -hmm. It helps you to be firstly a more active and engaged listener it helps mm -hmm. you to be a better conversationalist. It helps you to be a better person in general if you right. are more present. Um, so really consciously doing those those small things to just, you know, leaving that interaction, moving on to the next interaction. You're already giving respect to the person that you are interacting with because you're giving them your, your probably one of the best gifts you could give them, which is mm -hmm. your time and your attention. Sure. Beautiful. Okay, so we've got observe your autopilot, be aware mm -hmm. of your posture, consciously arrive and leave. What's next? Mm -hmm. Do things that your future self will thank you for. Mm. <laughs> so this is something that I have I've been experimenting with for probably about 10 years. And it's basically just to get myself to do things, to keep myself motivated to do things that I don't want to do. I think about future Taryn and I think about the fact that she would really appreciate having the bed made when she comes home. That's the simple, that's, that's where this all started. So it was, it was this, this thing where I, I was, I was just, it was finding it really difficult to make my bed. I was finding it really difficult to get all of these small tasks done. And I, I just started thinking about it from my own perspective of how can I do things that I would thank myself for that I would appreciate because I mean, I care about myself and I want to take care of myself. So that so I have to think forward for myself mm -hmm. for am I going to appreciate this decision in the future or yeah. am I not going to appreciate it? And it's a really it's a really good tool to think about what you're doing and the decisions that you're making. Is your future self going to thank you or is your future self going to be like, why did you do that? Why, mm -hmm. why have you put, set me at this disadvantage? And now we have to move we have to move forward from this place rather than a place where you could have just, you know, you could have just taken the small task in the first place sure. and done it, done it would have been done. Um, but it is a beautiful thing when you're, when you're doing things for yourself, you're like, yeah. you know what, my future self would definitely thank me for this. So I'm just going to do this now. I'm going to get it sorted and squared away. And when that moment comes that you, you are literally in that future moment and you're yeah. doing that, that activity. You're like, wow, I'm so glad that is done. I'm so grateful yeah. to myself. Celebrate for that doing moment. That. Absolutely. And it helps yeah. you to just, again, show that little bit of self-love and incorporate that into your everyday as well.
Mm -hmm. So that could be, and by the way, I don't know if you can hear it or our listeners can hear it, but like five doors down from where we live, they've torn down a house and now they're like, you know, I think for the next year and a half, they'll be building that house. You know, it takes forever for a house to be built. So I'm like, great. I've got all this sound on my podcast. (laughs) I can't worry about it, Taryn. It's real life. What am I going to do? No, it is what it is. I also can't hear a thing. Just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, and for those uh, who are listening, this is super crazy. You're in South Africa right now because you were on business yeah. and you literally can't leave. Can't leave. The borders are COVID. closed. Yeah. The borders are closed. So yeah, can't get out of here. And so um, you just, are you renting at, like an apartment or what? Did I you am in an Airbnb that has not, ne- that's not ended. <laughs> just stayed at the Airbnb. <laughs> stayed at the Airbnb and I just keep extending every month every month. Um, I'm actually in the process of moving to Mexico. So until that, that uh, comes through and I can like officially get the government papers signed to leave the country, yeah. then that'll happen. But until that happens, I just, I'm just happy where I'm at. I'm yeah. grateful to be here. I'm really grateful for how things ended up and where I landed. So no complaints on my end. Well, I'm sure the Airbnb owners are happy to have you there. So yeah, I'm sure they are. They're, they're getting yoga sessions. <laughs> oh, really? Getting, yeah. That's great. For sure. That's For so sure. fun. Okay, so yeah. um, um, teach us the last one, the last of five ways to be more mindful. Yeah, absolutely. So the last one is to listen more and speak less. And this is something that I would highly recommend if you are just l- wanting to learn a little bit more about people. If you're interested in people and behavior, then a beautiful way to learn about human nature and the human condition is to just observe. And so this is all of these, obviously all of these tips are about observation and awareness. Um, But this is awareness of not only how you are interacting and being around other people and the effect that you have on other people, but also so just learning different dynamics, being able to take a step back and see, it's, it's really a superpower to be able to see the dynamic of a group or to understand where the energy of the group is at or um, to just even know how to respond rather than to react to people mm-hmm. and what they are saying. Uh, so again, learning how to listen is a, a skill that has to be trained and it has to be built up. Uh, mm-hmm. just like, just like any other muscle. So mm-hmm. yeah. That's awesome. Um, I know that, uh, you actually have co-founded a company called remote mm-hmm. team, uh, wellness, and you help yeah. businesses and companies cultivate wellness in their company, you know, in their mm-hmm. organizations. Um, how can, give us some examples of how business owners can actually do that. Like what are some ways that they could, do that on their own or even work with you to cultivate health and wellness in their companies? Yeah. So one of the first ways is by making it a priority. So you have to make it a priority and schedule time for it. Otherwise it's just not going to happen. So that's definitely one of the most practical things to actually implement a wellness program, to reach out to a wellness service provider and make sure that you have someone that is taking care of the wellness for your team to making sure. And well, when I say the word wellness, it often gets misconstrued as just being, you know, just your health um, or just your fitness, you know, Mm -hmm. but wellness is quite a multidimensional concept which encompasses your social wellness, your emotional wellness, your environmental wellness, your occupational wellness, your intellectual wellness, your physical wellness, and your spiritual wellness as well. So there are so many different layers and facets that really do define what it means to be well. Mm -hmm. So having, having someone to really think about and check in on those elements of taking care of the human part, human element of your, your corporation is so, Mm -hmm. so vital and important as well. Um, Another really implementable, easy way to, to do it. If you don't have the budget for it, if you're, if you're not quite ready to invest in it is definitely to just start sending out wellness focused newsletters. You could start sending out 
just an email once a month talking about talking about different tips and methods to think about how to be well and maybe even just implementing implementing office hours for one of your team members to check in with with all of the other employees to be able to know where they're at because again we're going through something that we none of us have ever faced before it's mm. very stressful it's very different it's it's and it's it's a time where people just really do need that point of contact, contact and connection. So mm -hmm. it's really important to make that a priority. And so, t tell me if I called your organization, your company, and said, mm -hmm. "Hey, I'm wanting to implement some health and wellness programs at our business. Mm -hmm. What are the options? Like, what what would you tell me that you could provide?" Yeah, absolutely. So we have different we have different packages set up. So we have three different levels, which are the startup, the holistic, and the chief wellness officer package. All of them entail slightly different benefits, but at the core of them you get at least at least two wellness sessions a month and that's with different wellness service providers from categories such as movement which is like which is different fitness fitness categories um, mindfulness which is all about meditation and mindset training and then we also have social and connection which is all about finding a way to network and come together and team build um, so it really just depends. We would have to go through an, an assessment, a wellness mm -hmm. assessment for your company and just find out what your priorities are, where you're at as a company and what you're really looking for to build and build that team connection. So, yeah. And this would look like my employees logging on from their homes mm -hmm. at the same time or would they watch pre-recorded yes. video or is this a live experience? Yep. Remote team wellness is a completely live virtual experience. So everyone would basically just get a link and join the call at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's we do all of the back work for you. We find that we find very very highly vetted ex expert teachers in their field, and then basically just get you guys to come to a session where you can just join and experience something that you may not have experienced before. Experience something that will help to keep your body and your mind functioning at its optimum. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. The beautiful thing I, I like about that too is it gives people a common um, language to talk about whatever it is that you're walking them through. You know, it's mm -hmm. a common way of talking about moving their body or common way of talking about mindset that allows them to kind of check in with each other and process. And um, that's really beautiful rather than them all doing their own thing on their own time, mm -hmm. which is great. That's all good. <laughs> but it creates a synergy for the company by having that yeah. shared experience. So very Absolutely. fascinating. Yeah, definitely. And it's also just to, again, keep that cohesiveness in, in amongst the team environment because there's not that, there's not the opportunity to do that outside of work at this point. Right. All right. So we will point people toward remoteteamwellness.com which uh, will be in the show notes. Of course, if you're on your phone, you can swipe up and click on that now. You also have a personal website where you talk about kind of your own background and yoga training and, you know, all mm -hmm. the things that you've done. The name is? <laughs> the Chocolate Pretzel. Um, so <laughs> you can find me at The Chocolate Pretzel um, on Instagram and Facebook. And I am thechocolatepretzel.com. That is my website where I do coaching for mindset, mindfulness, wellness, and yoga as well. What an incredible URL. That uh, I'm sure when you went to buy that URL, it's like, yeah, well, this is definitely available. What are you need? <laughs> well, yeah, chocolate pretzel was not available. That was well, taken wasn't. by a pretzel. The, yeah, chocolate pretzel was taken by a pretzel shop. So oh, okay. <laughs> like a literal chocolate pretzel shop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is funny. I know okay. it really was. That is so good. I think if I started a website like called the whitepretzel.com, I just think that would be weird. I don't know. <laughs> I just don't, I don't think that would be good, Taryn. <laughs> Not it doesn't 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 quite doesn't quite roll off the tongue as as easily. Yeah. The white chocolate pretzel. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I look, I don't know. Nah. I mean, Stop I'm definitely not a pretzel. Definitely not a pretzel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's here's the URL for me: the white chocolate pretzel stick dot com. Yeah, because I could just be straight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just a straight stick pretzel stick. Love it. 
Love it. <laughs> like a poke steak. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> good. Taryn, it's been great to be with you. Thank you for these tips. This really, I think, will help us, you know, process this. And I hope that some um, business leaders, as they're, you know, listening, that they will take this seriously um, Mm -hmm. for their own companies. Whether they reach out to your company or do it on their own, it's great um, just to take health and wellness seriously. So thank you so much, Taryn. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time, David. I really appreciate being here. Thank you. Hey, congrats on listening to another episode of Inspiration Rising. Why congrats? Because you're pouring education and inspiration into your mind and heart. And that's something we all need if we're going to grow our businesses and reach our goals in life. Now, if you enjoy Inspiration Rising, do us a favor, share it with a friend, take a screenshot of your favorite episode and text it to them. Tell them to search for Inspiration Rising on their favorite podcast app and click subscribe. And if you haven't already, be sure to sign up for Inspo Text. That's our daily inspirational text messages. Just text me right now at 949-401-6090. That's 949-401-6090. Just say, hey, Dave, what's up? You'll get an automated reply with a link where you can add yourself as a contact. And of course, you can always unsubscribe. I want you to know today that you're inspired, empowered, and loved. Not because of the way you feel or what anyone else says about you, but because that's your true identity.